<laughs> All right, you ready, Val? I'm ready. All right. I'd like to call this meeting to order and state that this meeting is being held in compliance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. It was properly noticed and it had been posted and certified by the clerk. Please call the roll. Mr. Hofferkamp. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Ms. Roberts. Here. Mr. Schindler. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Young. Here. And Mayor Francis. Here. Please join me in the salute to the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag, the flag. of the United, United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty, liberty and justice, 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 justice for all. Thank you. There are no proclamations tonight, but I believe there'll be one next meeting. Uh, so committee reports, let's start with Don. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to let everyone know that um, some, some of the younger families in town are finally starting to catch up a little bit with uh, staggered unemployment. It's still behind, but I guess going in the right direction. So uh, for the families with little children, we have been collecting cases of baby food we have all types of formula. We have diapers coming, uh, baby and toddler clothes and blankets that will be disinfected and packaged before they come to the community center. And we are giving those out to anyone uh, that needs to just fill in the gaps. Um, it's here for anyone that needs. We are getting our groups up and running again. Uh, so that's, that's great news. We are at half capacity, but we are we are filled. We, we do have 50% signing up uh, for the um, programs and support groups, things like that. We also had um, a yoga night, uh, just 12 people. Everyone's mat separated, but uh, this lady is offering her services uh, to do yoga as stress management post COVID or during COVID, however you want to say it. Um, and that was a big hit. Everyone's asking to have that back. Um, everyone felt great afterwards. Everyone did wear a mask, but their masks were spread apart. And um, I think it was nice to see people coming together and just relaxing a little bit. So we're going to do more stress management style uh, gatherings here. I think people really need that right now and the sense of unity. So we're, we're, we're recovering from the pandemic, we're, we're going strong, we're rebuilding again, and I think we're gonna be okay. But if anyone needs anything, we're here, our doors are open, just come in with a mask, we'll do a temp check. If that's all okay, then let's meet with you and see what we can do to help. So I think we're doing okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Brad? Mayor, just a couple things. Uh, this upcoming Labor Day, uh, we are going to have 10 more banners up on Hopachung for the hometown heroes. I'd like to read into the record the names of those 10 individuals, if I could. Please do. William Riley, senior airman, Sergeant Robert McMillan, Specialist John R. Wilkerson, Jr., Specialist Dominic Green, SP-4, James Liptek, Staff Sergeant Michael Scuzzese, HM Eric Zawistowski, Staff Sergeant Patrick Ferrente, Captain Earl Davidson, and Sergeant Ryan Farthrop. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there will be uh, names added when we have our Veterans Day uh, in November for these and others who are coming on board. Right at this point in time, we pretty much are close to filling up uh, Hopatchung Road. Uh, on another matter, I'd just like to bring up that uh, the Hopatcon market's been a, a very good success due to a little bit of weather problems. They've been closed a couple times so far in the season. And I believe everyone on council and uh, the mayor has received a request to extend it into November. I see no reason against that. I'm very supportive of it. I think it's been a great addition to our overall um, town for sure. So I'd uh, just like to wish everybody a happy Labor Day coming up. 
that's all. Thank you. Rich, you're up. Okay. Um, well, I just want to uh, thank our, Depo our uh, Department of Public Works and the EMS and fire and police like usual and all the volunteers in the uh, town. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, the real estate committee met and uh, we're working on selling some more properties on the uh, agenda tonight is bringing up 64 Roosevelt Trail, uh, 32 Alexandria Drive and 16 Tufts Trail. So um, please give that consideration. This will be the first reading just to be able to get it on uh, the books and be able to move forward with the possible auction. Um, again, if anyone is interested in um, a piece of property in the town, please contact Ron Tappen at the municipal building. The real estate committee is act actively looking and seeking uh, to sell some of the property that the town does not need. <clears throat> um, the water committee met and um, you'll see on the uh, agenda tonight that um, we are awarding uh, with the approval of the council uh, ordinance 20-121 uh, to hire D Block Environmental to be the licensed water operator for our water company. Um, these guys are a good company and uh, I think we should move forward with it. Uh, next, um, the COVID-19 uh, virus is still around us so please uh, be diligent with social distancing and wearing your masks and also please go and support your local businesses and especially our restaurants. And even though the restaurants are uh, <clears throat> seating outdoor, now they're allowed indoor at 25%. So uh, please go and uh, uh, support them and then have be Labor Day. That's it. Thank you. Yan Yong, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, the Environmental Commission. The, we met a short time ago. The first thing we did, we had a little quick review of the Opacon <coughs> Heroes banner program which if i haven't said it before i'm sure i have that was uh um, a uh, a baby of the beautification committee from the environmental commission so we kind of um quickly reviewed that we had some conversation with the beautification committee about some of their ideas for upcoming um we talked about the creative arts council and at this point, we've kind of tabled it until the first of the year. We've got the Environmental Commission right now has quite a bit going on. They've been kicking about making it part of a committee or not. So we kind of tabled that. Um, some of the events, I know I've mentioned it before, the Lake of Pacong Foundation block party has been canceled. Uh, the townwide cleanup is scheduled for September 26th. It's in the Hopakong happenings for September 19th, but it's actually September 26th. Uh, that's a Saturday. The rain garden ribbon cutting that we plan on having is September 12th. Uh, as you know, the two rain gardens that were put in were put in uh, just below the um, senior center. We're planning a fall trail hike over in the Roland May Eves sanctuary area. That's scheduled right now for October 17th. Don't have a time yet. It's usually nine o'clock in the morning, but I need to check on that. And Shred Day is September 19th. We talked a bit about invasive species besides us humans. Uh, one of the things we talked about is the spotted lanternfly, which kind of got a warning about that last year already. And, and there's not too many sightings here in Opakong, but apparently there's quite a few in Mount Arlington. So it's on its way. Um, excuse me while I turn the page. From recreation, recreation actually hasn't met. They meet next week, but I want to remind everybody that we're still moving forward with the Halloween celebration. We are not doing a Halloween parade, but we are still planning Halloween at Modic Park with a costume contest for children. And there's usually entertainment things for the children as well. The rain, that's scheduled for October 11th from 12 to 3, and the rain date is October 18th, also from 10 to 3. We're also batting around looking into some possible things as far as uh, around the Christmas holiday, to see if we can put something together. Um, 
Municipal Alliance also has not met. However, we've been electronically batting back and forth with trying to schedule a movie. And right now we're aiming for September 25th. Don't have a movie yet, uh, but we're planning on, right now we're planning on September 25th. And that will probably be at the high school lower parking lot because we can do a drive-in style there. Um, and that's it. Thank you, John. Ryan, you're up. Okay, I'll start with the Chamber of Commerce announcements. We got a lot going on next week. Uh, on September 8th, we have the B2B breakfast. On September 10th, the, that's the next virtual job fair. Uh, September 11th is our next uh, Sussex South Council meeting. And uh, we're still looking forward to the new date of the Expo 2020, which was rescheduled from this past June to uh, our new date is October 29th. Um, the next Sussex County Water Quality PAC meeting is tomorrow night at 9, uh, 730. And over at the Sussex County MUA, we've got the Sharps Disposal Program tomorrow from 10 to noon. Uh, the next paper shredding event is September 18th. And the next e-waste event is October 17th. That's all I got. Thank you. Jennifer, you're up. You're muted. There you go. Yep, I know. I know. Thanks. Um, uh, I really just have two things for school. Um, school starts tomorrow. Good luck to all the students in Hopakong uh, starting school tomorrow, the third. Um, and uh, buy popcorn from your Boy Scouts because they're selling it and there are sales through October. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Ron, do the administrative report. Hi, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've only got two things for the report tonight. One, all the paving will commence in the borough starting September 8th. The, uh, all the delays that we've incurred and everything that's happened, we are ready and locked for September the 8th. All the ironwork has been done. And we appreciate everybody's patience on road closures. And we're going to do our best to keep our traffic flows going as much as we can and get the work done and make everything better after it's all done. So that's all starting September 8th. The notices have gone door to door and been hung. So for all the respective build houses that are going to be affected. Um, and the second thing I wanted to talk about was river sticks. Uh, most of you have seen that some of the, the lights went up and all of them came back down. Uh, we found out through the implementation of that, that the contractor by model number ordered the right model. The, co the manufacturer by model number shipped the right ones. Unfortunately, the poles were not the right model. And it was going to be a very interrupted process for us to keep going because they were wrong size. And it really put a, a, a burden on us trying to hang the remaining banners and stuff of that nature. So um, all the poles were shipped back today. They're going back to California to get remanufactured and they're going to be shipped back to us for installation. The long and the short of this is it's going to be about a month's delay on the program. The contractor's eating all the cost of this. It's, it's, uh, it's just, between him and the manufacturer, they're working out how they'll deal with that, but this is no cost impact to the borough. It's just an unfortunate timing that we have to you know, delay the project another month. So other than that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to open for public comments. So made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This public comment is an opportunity that is given to the public for Commentary comments are limited to one comment of no more than five minutes. So uh, go ahead and open it up, Ron. It's open and I'd ask all the, the public and anyone that wants to comment to please hit your reaction button and raise and it will raise a hand and I'll get to those as soon as they come across. Thank you. Michelle, you're on. Hi. Um, previously I asked what was the official Facebook pages and communication publications of our municipality. And I never got a, quite got an answer on that. The reason I asked that question is that there has been some abuse by our council members who have publicly attacked me on Facebook pages, calling me demented, calling me um, unpatriotic, twisted, 
whatnot. And there were Facebook pages that were political and they'd signed their names as council members. So, um, and they provoked a lot of hate uh, and it was hostility. And the thing is on some of these Facebook pages that they had, they had the same photograph as hapacon.org, okay? So now I'm looking at Hapacon Happenings and it's a publication that we use uh, a Catholic um, agency. Uh, it's called LBI and it says about us, we believe in the vibrant churches matter. For nearly five decades, we've helped thousands of parishioners across, across the country international intentionally communicate communicate with their parishioners grow their engagement and advance a stewardship way of life we are embraced by tech, technological changes to better serve the emerging needs of the catholic church in the modern world our passion is to help our customers change the world one parishioner at the time and that is the organization that is doing the printing of a hap pack on happenings now, who is the editor of HEPAC on Happenings? Well, it turns out that it's a person who's actually suing our borough. They are the editor, okay? And the, the person that they're suing in, in question is a very lovely former councilwoman who is a devout Catholic, okay? And, and that gives that person a lot of power to be the editor of the Pack on Happenings. And I'm just wondering, what was the rationale behind that? And also, what also bothers me about Pack on Happenings is the calendar, okay? Um, there are two things that are going on in this calendar, which is, um, the, that shows the county nutrition program and also our recreational program. These are two separate things and there is no footnote or anything on where who sponsors these events or, or, or the food program that it's really sponsored by our our uh, county and our state program the Sus Sussex County nutrition program okay they call it the golden lunch bunch and people are confused between what is seniors Inc which is a 501c3 and a, sep a separate entity from a pack on senior center Okay, we conduct or release out a building to the Congregate Nutrition Center, and that's a state, county, and federal program. And we also have the recreational department using programs in the lower level, which, which I fought and brought to the attention that it was not, did not have handicapped accessible toilets. And we also have a health department that does programs at that lower level that doesn't conform to the handicapped laws, federal laws of ha providing a toilet for people who are handicapped. And that's what I fought for when, when I presented that some time ago. And then I was actually, pre the, the Hapakon Women's Club was actually pressured to throw me out of, of the um, of the organization and I had to go because they, they said that I represented the pack on um, women's club which I didn't about a grant money to provide handicapped accessibility for the lower level and what they what they wound up doing is that they had to backtrack everything they did because I went to the greater federation of women's club to tell them that I was representing because the Greater Federation of Women's Club asked for someone to be a chair legislator, and I said I would step up to the plate Your time's and represent. Got your five minutes. And represent. Thank you. Time's represent up. Legislation that was important to the, those who are handicapped. Next up, Ron. Mr. McGovern, you're up. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, I represent uh, I'm Frank McGovern. I'm an attorney from Newton, and I represent a, a group of property owners that uh, own 10 homes on Kissling and on Oneida. And the purpose of 
me making a comment has to do with you have on the agenda the introduction of proposed ordinance uh, 24 2020. Uh, so I just wanted to speak to that for a moment. Uh, our concern uh, with that uh, proposed ordinance is that uh, it may have a direct impact on uh, their ability uh, to be able to use the access going down rigs uh, down to the beach and down to the waters. Um, I had an opportunity to read the, uh, the proposed ordinance. I, I see that it uh, seeks to vacate uh, a portion of rigs, but it also seeks to extinguish uh, the rights of the public in that portion as well. And that's the part that we're particularly concerned about. Um, I understand, at least when I read the proposed ordinance, that it seems that there's a recognition that once vacated, that the uh, strip of rigs would revert back to uh, the owners of record. Um, but that's where things become a little bit of a mess because in the record, uh, we have certain rights of access and so forth that we believe we have. It's just that now it's going to, uh, it's a murky uh, title question. And it's something that's gonna re probably require eventually to be proved out. Uh, from our point of view, Riggs was uh, a dedicated right of way since before the year 1900. And at least since the early 1970s, it's been actively used by these uh, various property owners, their families, their kids, their residents uh, to be able to get access uh, down to the lake. Uh, they're at a loss as to why the mayor and council are interested uh, in uh, vacating that strip of road. Uh, they don't see any public purpose to that. Uh, if it, I understand if you vac, I mean, right now you don't own the road, at least the way I see it. It's been dedicated to the public use, so you really don't have a responsibility for the road uh, at, least, uh, at this point. Uh, so all you're what you're really doing is extinguishing the rights of the public to that road, and that that's where we think it has a direct uh, impact. What I would ask is that at least until we can search it out a little further, maybe have some discussion uh, and then just make sure exactly what the impact of the proposed ordinance would be, uh, perhaps consider tabling the introduction uh, to allow that discussion to take place um, and then make a decision once you have all of the information to put together to decide on what that impact is. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Uh, Ms. Podarski, you up? Hi. Hold on. I just have to. Hi, Ron. Um, this is, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Amanda Bednarski and I own 41 Adelphi in Hopacon. Um, I've actually been in contact with you and with the mayor along with, uh, I think, Jennifer Johnson and John Ruschke, the town engineer. So what I wanted to talk about is a flooding problem. It's a, a water problem that's caused by the property owned by the Hopacon Borough, 50 Fordham Trail, which is behind me. Um, there's a catch basin. It's, so it's elevated higher than my backyard and my property. And there's a catch basin at the top of that, which runs directly into my backyard. Now, I just bought this house over a year ago or about a year ago. And I understand that I'm a new owner, but, and this, this problem is uh, pre-existing as a few of you have called it, but um, it's, causing water damage and flooding to my house. And it's not my, my property that's causing it. It is caused by the Hopacon's property. And I've been told that by John that the town has no plans for um, having any kind of water improvement or water mitigation improvement plans. So um, that's really why I'd like to bring it up because I'm not going to can't move I, I can't move. I can't move forward with my house. I can't move into it. I can't. I don't want to renovate anything. Um, there's been two storms in the past couple of months, one in May and the most recent one that we've had. Um, my entire basement flooded. There was about two and a half, like, no, there was a foot and a half of water 
in my basement from the last storm. And because there was no electric, the, it could not be pumped out. So I have videos, I sent them to you, and I believe uh, Mr. Francis, I sent it to you as well, um, a video and many pictures of the flooding. Um, I know that, I don't know when the catch basin was installed, but I know that that's the direct, we followed, my father and I followed the trail of water during the last storm, we, we walked up the whole, you know, back of my property, my next door neighbor, and up through uh, 50 Fordham. It's a double lid catch basin. So it's a big catch basin and it carries a lot of water. And when it comes down, I'll tell you, it's like Niagara Falls coming down. And it has to be taken care of. I mean, it's, you know, originally we were told, well, they didn't own the property. Yeah. But you do own the property and they show that there's no record of them installing that catch basin. Well, nobody else installed it but the town. Because the town installs the catch basins. Mm -hmm. So they just had to go onto a piece of property just running straight out. And it just floods. I mean, it's like Niagara Falls coming down. And it flooded the basement and everything gets ruined. We can't bring, we're not bringing anything new in there until this is resolved. Yeah. And we can't move forward. The on, current the current well tank and um, the, the hot the, water heater, the boiler, they were all, all ruined. All all ruined. Um, and of course the entire basement was flooded. And there's also, I mean, my backyard has trails. It looks like little like stream lanes from the water. Um, like, so initially when we first, I spoke with Pat Mason and a couple other people, he said, you know, we don't own the property. There was a problem with easement, but now, you know, there is no problem because you, you guys own the property and I have no problem with you guys running a pipe on the side of my property, right to the street. I mean, on the property, my daughter's property in front of it is a catch basin at each end of the property. Mm -hmm. So they actually could run a pipe from that catch basin on Fordham Trail right down the edge of the property to tie into that catch basin. And that would resolve the problem. So this has you to know, be I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, hearing the, you know, constantly hearing the pre-existing condition. Okay, it could have been, yeah, you know, 20 years, 30 years, it doesn't matter. I know the previous owner fought, fought this before i mean the flooding actually caused the neighbor's septic tank to burst when she, thank god that didn't happen to me but the sewage ran into her yard into well my current yard and i apparently she tried mm. to fight the town but she she actually used to work for the town too but she wasn't she didn't get any answers but um just because it's a pre-existing condition it doesn't make it my pre-existing condition. It's the town's pre-existing condition. So I just would like to bring that up to everyone on the council. So um, did you review the uh, the videos and everything of the water? And I, I had sent uh, pictures and a video to you and John. I don't know if you guys, if the mayor got a chance to see it or. Um, so yeah, that's really, that's why I'm attending this council meeting. <laughs> yeah. right. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Uh, thanks, Amanda. We'll be getting, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Um, M.M., you're up. Hi, Mayor Modes. Um, I have a question about resolution I. I happen to like Anna. She's moving from the kitchen duties to clerk one. I'd like to know if it's a civil service job. Was it posted? How many people applied? What are her duties? And will we be hiring kitchen help to replace her? I'd also like to read a statement. I'd like to thank Dawn Roberts and Jennifer Johnson for voting to table the ordinance to partially vacate Riggs Lane. This action would not only have respected the residents that voiced their concerns, but also saved the borough money. In my opinion, Councilman Bradley Hoppenkamp, John Young, and Richard Schindler showed poor judgment at the July 15, 2020 meeting when they voted in favor of partially vacating Riggs Lane. They voted despite the residents' credible assertions of deeded rights to the property, and they were also fully aware a search of deeded rights and title rights were going to be done. When asked if there was a legal reason to table a vote, attorney John Erson said, there was no reason you can move on it. Oh, you can't move on it. Wouldn't the potential for a lawsuit if you vacated the property the borough does not own be a valid reason? 
I remember when John Erson auctioned off property to PSC&G for the switching station. Thankfully, the borough only had to refund the money. When PSC&G found out the property was not even in the borough, we should be learning from our mistakes, not repeating them. For transparency, and since this is the second time this property holder was given borough vacated land, and since Mr. Hofferkamp took the time at the February 19th, 2020 meeting to, up, to make unsubstantiated claims against residents that attended municipal meetings, perhaps he would like to take this opportunity to address the internet remarks alleging he, he serves on the Yacht Club board and is a member of the boat club with the landholder in question and why he did not recuse himself. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Mayor, I don't see any other hands. Oh, here we go. We got one. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Puggio. Good evening, Mr. Puggio, you're up. <laughs> and, and the question is, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, Jim Puccio, uh, 233 Stanhope Sparta Road, Andover, New Jersey. Um, um, on behalf of the committee running the marketplace, we wanted to thank the, uh, the town. Uh, we've been having a very successful season so far, and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully, as we say, extending that season, but I want to let you know on some interesting stuff going on. For example, uh, each weekend for the next five weekends, we have themed weekends. Uh, so we're going to have uh, this weekend will be called Hippies to Disco. The weekend of the 12th is going to be uh, Fabulous 50s. We're going to have a DJ for that one. I believe this weekend we are having a live uh, musician. Husband and wife are going to be performing. On the 19th, we're going to be doing an Oktoberfest. Uh, on the 26th of September will be what's called the Fall Festival. And on the 3rd, we're going to do what's called Down on the Farm and Blessing of the Animals. So we're really looking forward to uh, the town getting out and involved, and uh, we wanted to uh, thank the town for its support behind uh, the marketplace. And that's it. I'm short and sweet tonight. Thank you, Jim. More up, Ron? Mr. Mayor, I don't see any other hands. Give it a, give it a. Give it a few seconds, just in case. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion to bring it back. So made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're back. Yours, Mayor. Approval of minutes. I want to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 11th, 2020. I'll make that motion. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. <clears throat> Mr. Hofferkamp? Yes. Ms. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Schindler? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Approval of the bill list? Um, thank you, Mayor. Does anyone need anything removed or discussed? Can I ask a question about the bills list? Certainly. There is a payment to Heller for um, $1,700. That's, what is that's that money. for? That, that probably the, uh, the, uh, the payment for the community center. I thought we weren't paying them rent. We, we are. We, we pay what he pays in taxes. Oh, thank I you. I thought that was noted on there. It, so it's a wash. Yeah, it's a wash. I, I, yeah, that makes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not hearing anything else, Mayor. I will move the bill list in its entirety. Second. Call the roll, please. <clears throat> Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Schindler? Yes. Mr. Smith? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young? 
Yes. We, do we have a, a consent agenda, Valerie? Yeah. Yeah, short one. I'll entertain a motion on a consent agenda. I'll move it. Second. Set. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. These are introductions of ordinances, and they're only introductions. So introduction of ordinance 24, 2020, vacating Riggs Lane right away, an, ordin an ordinance further partially vacating Riggs Lane right of way in the borough of Apacon, County of Sussex and state of New Jersey. I'm gonna make a motion to table it based on uh, the, uh, I think we need more information. Same, same reason I wanted to table it last time. Well, this, this is just an introduction, so it's not. I know, I know. At the pleasure of the council. Is there an ability to discuss it, or are we just tabling it? No. Um, I'll move it so we can discuss it. I'll second it so we can discuss it. John? Sure, sure, Mayor. So, uh, look, when we were when we were previously together, the the, the last ordinance that was passed, uh, you the council by a three two vote passed an ordinance that vacated small areas of Riggs Lane. The neighbors objected. Uh, the neighbors who hold rights to go down to the lake in that area. And they made the argument that vacating those small areas, uh, which would effectively transfer it to the adjoining property owners, uh, would interfere with their rights to get to the lake. Uh, we agreed to do a title search and look into things further. Uh, what I told the council at the time is that I didn't see how a title search was going to affect any issue concerning the neighbor's rights to, to go to the property because we had seen those documents. Um, we, to our surprise, when we did the title search, the conclusion of the title search was that the property had never been deeded to the borough and the property had never been accepted uh, as a roadway or dedicated to the road, to the municipality in any way. So uh, this ordinance is really completely different than what we had done previously. We notified uh, the neighbor that uh, us vacating the property, and again, us vacating the property is not a transfer of property, okay? So when we previously vacated the property, uh, as adjoining property owners, if we had owned it, the, the neighboring property would have took some rights. But here, uh, the situation is that we now pretty conclusively know that the borough does not own the road. I don't think there's any serious debate about that. Uh, and uh, we really, the right thing to do is to correct the record. So we're not affecting anyone's property rights here. Anyone who has a deeded interest in the property deeded rights of access, deeded right to use the beach, deeded right to use docks, whatever it may be. They have those rights, they're recorded at the Sussex County Clerk's Office, and our action here has nothing to do with that. Um, so what we're doing here is getting on the record that we do not own the property so that the records can be corrected. And that's it. And so the property owners uh, who have the deeded rights down to what's been called the beach area, um, we, nothing we're doing here affects their rights. Uh, and in fact, I would have expected that they would have been happy about this because right now, uh, because it had been misclassified as public property, um, everyone in the world uh, could have gone down Riggs Lane and gone down to the lake in that area. And going forward, it will only be property owners who have the right to go down there. So this is really about correcting the record uh, and making it proper. Uh, I, I can't, I've spoken to Mr. McGovern. I know him well and respect his opinion on things, uh, but uh, I think him and I are probably gonna disagree on this. I think his comments, you know, that it that it's going to create a little bit of a murky title issue, are probably true. But 
murky issues of title are solved by what's reported at the county clerk's office. And for us to continue to uh, either uh, erroneously believe or misrepresent by the tax maps that, that the borough is the owner of the property uh, serves no interest at all. So that's, uh, that's, that's my position on it. It's an introduction and, um, and, I, and I do recommend it. So it's private property. Is, is it that well, true? Private property. Yes, yes Mayor. Well, the, the private property is controlled by the people who own it, correct? Correct, Mayor. And it's the entirety of Riggs Lane from the beach all the way up to Kissling Ave. So I think the ordinance describes the section below Oneida as what's being vacated. When we examine the title, uh, that's the section that we examine. Examining title, you know, takes time and costs money. Um, we did not examine the upper section because, you know, the section of people who access from Oneida and go down was primarily the issue at the last meeting. We can look further into whether the upper section should be called into question, but certainly given um, the, the information that we received from the, the, the neighbors, that people come down Oneida from either way, um, that people use rigs, neighbors come from above. Um, and, and, you know, frankly, uh, the sensitive area of private property ownership and of private property rights is the lake access. So that's why the, the action is focused on that area um, because that's what we researched and that is the area of sensitivity. So, okay, so we only ran the title search on that one section, not the whole thing. I strongly suspect that the same results are going to come with the upper section, but the uh, I you know I don't want to commit to that right now in case there was something else reported between the property owners above. But the the focus was the lower section. Yes. Okay. So this actually helps the people on rigs. The, well, the people I mean, that were, were <laughs> it, you know, it so, gives so, them their access. It gives so, them their ask, access. Well, so, so I, I discussed this uh, with Mr. McGovern and uh, he, he's, his point is, is correct. He's, he's certainly, uh, um, he certainly knows this area very well. Um, you know, so I think his, his, his clients are concerned that, you know, this action creates some confusion, which is probably true, but it's a reality because you have to revert back to what's on the county clerk records. Um, I, I did make the point and I'm making it here to the council and to the public that in many ways, whoever is a participant in the Echo Cove Association, I think would be, um, uh, might, let me say might, might view this positively because going forward, uh, that area, the borough cannot uh, attempt to convey it, can't impinge the rights, can't let other people use it, and um, frankly, uh, you know, from what I understand of the title, you know, once this ordinance passes, if it does, the only people who could use that property are, are the title owners going back in history and the people from the Echo Cove Association, rather than, frankly, every member of the public, right? When it's a public right of way, um, you know, uh, if there's a day where another dock or a beach is full and somebody really studied a municipal map, uh, they could put together a caravan and there could be 50 people down there. Um, but that hasn't happened in the past. This is pretty isolated. But from a property owner's perspective, the, the universe of people that could affect this property in the future, or, or I guess use it, would be limited to the property owner of record in the clerk's office and the Echo Cove Association. So in that regard, I think it is... Um, it, it, it could, let me, I don't want to speak for them. It could be viewed positively. And look, um, I'm going to be speaking to Mr. McGovern more. Um, I, you know, if we find out anything differently, we'll be happy to react to it. Um, you know, and I think, I think uh, some of the comments of Mr. McGovern were to that end that, that uh, you know, that this is going to create a title issue. And, you know, maybe by the next meeting, he might have a different request of us. I don't know. But go. As far as I can see it from the, for only from the municipal point of view, this is a correction of the record issue. Thank you. 
Okay. So, John, Johnny, I have a question. I'm sorry, John. You want to go no. first? Well, I was just going to to uh, say that this is actually not a typical vacation of of of, of a of borough property. It's actually uh, correcting the records and making a statement that the borough does not own it, and other than stormwater management, has no interest in it. Yeah, I, John, uh, that Mr. Young, that is correct. Uh, normally, and the way the statute works is if the borough has a, uh, a right away that we have an interest in when we vacate it, by law, it's bisected and goes half to each of the property owners, right? right um, yeah. That is not the case here. Um, we are vacating the road and the, I, think the I think the ordinance makes it crystal clear that we're claiming no ownership in it and we are um, not giving anyone the impression that they would get rights to that right away from us vacating the road. The only people that will have rights to that right away, um, you know, I think it's crystal clear in the, in the ordinance, but I'll be clear here, is whoever has a recorded, deeded interest one way or the other in the clerk's office, that's it. The question I have, and the way I'm understanding this is the title search came back that we don't have any deeded rights in that property. We do not own it in fee and there are private owners that do. My question about the ordinance itself is it, it appears to me that it's more of a quick claim deed, except we're resolving that at a council level and that we're saying we understand that we have no rights in it, we release any rights in it, whatever we ever had, we're releasing now and we're clearing the record. The question that I have is specifically in the ordinance, we're retaining rights to discharge stormwater there. Yeah, so do we have, do we have property rights. If we have no rights in that, that's not really part of the bundle of rights that we would have if we had no rights in there. We can't retain that. And the follow-up question to that is, has the town engineer been out there to ascertain if we have any physical structures in that? Because if we have stormwater structures there that we need to maintain and we don't have rights to have stormwater structures there, I have a problem with that. So um, the good, very good questions, Mr. Smith. So first of all, I, I do agree with your characterization of the, the analogy of a quick claim deed. That is the purpose here. Um, the, uh, I've spoken to the engineer. We do not have any uh, stormwater structures in Riggs Lane. Um, we tend to, every time we vacate property, we tend to include that clause in there. And in this case, it's not a nod to, or, or at least a reference to, historical rights to operate any kind of stormwater structures, but more a reference to the historical natural flow of water, right? Um, and, you know, if, if, uh, if any of the council members felt strongly about taking that out, I would be fine with that. My purpose in leaving it in was the natural flow of water in an undeveloped area um, as we're giving up our rights to it. I didn't want to necessarily give up what would be any discharging property owners' rights where you have naturally flowing stormwater in undeveloped areas. That's all. They've, they've had that naturally unaltered stormwater runoff going down there for a hundred years. So, which hasn't affected the town at all. It hasn't, it ha we haven't maintained that at all. So why would we claim rights to that now? No, no. So it's it's not rights to maintain stormwater. It's rights to discharge, right? So when you know when you have a prop again, there's there's two different concepts, completely different concepts. Where there's stormwater that's artificially developed one way or the other, whether it's between a municipality or property owners, that's treated one area. In the second area, it is naturally flowing stormwater runoff, sheet flow, whatever it is, uh, in undeveloped areas we wouldn't want somebody to come back later on and say, hey, now that you don't own that property anymore, that water that flows from the top of the hill down to the bottom of the hill, you can't discharge it there anymore, meaning off of whatever is going to be the municipal property down to that area. So it's, 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 it's a reference to naturally flowing stormwater, not to going on the property to maintain anything, but just that we wouldn't have somebody object to stormwater later on. And frankly, if we took that reference out, the, the law would be the same with respect to it. We would, we would have the rights to naturally discharge stormwater and its natural flow of things through the woods or, or an undeveloped area. So, um, you know, 
I, I put it in there because I think it's a useful reference, but uh, I have no objection if it comes out. I would like to see that come out, and then I'd be certainly going to vote for this quick claim deed of open resolution. I'm sorry, I missed Brian. I what did you, you say? Probably. I missed it. I said that I, I would like to see this quick claim deed executed, but I think that we really need to take out that stormwater clause. So there's a, there's a motion and a second on the floor. Again, there can be as much discussion as, as you decide in the mayor, but if somebody wanted to, um, uh, the movers and the seconders or a different person wanted to move to amend it to remove paragraph four of section A, that's, um, I, I, I don't have an objection to that. Do I hear that motion? Okay. I'll make that motion. I, I will second that motion. Okay. okay, so so Valerie, that's that's a motion in a second to amend a uh, motion that is on the table. So we should have a vote to amend the motion to adopt, which is going to be uh, to remove paragraph four of section A. And this is a vote only on amending the motion on the table on the on the uh, on the table. Thank you. So that's um, that made in second. Would you? Call the roll on that amendment, please. Sure. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. Right. So the, the ordinance, the motion to uh, introduce the ordinance has been amended and is has been uh, moved and seconded and is available for further discussion or action. And uh, just for complete clarity, again, it is uh, the ordinance 24-2020 as written, deleting paragraph four of section A. I'll move that. It's, it's, it's already moved. So if there's further discussion or when you're ready, it could be ready for action. So, the, okay. So this ordinance also says indeterminate length. Is there a way that we table it until we figure out the determinate <laughs> length? It's, it's, a, it's a very good question. In fact, the title searcher and I spoke about this. So the, um, the, the answer is no, uh, because the, the grant uh, back in the 50s or 60s, I forget the date, where the grant went to the four homeowners and then the grant followed entitled to the Echo Cove Association. Mm -hmm. It's that person's grant that was indeterminate depth. So the way it's described, we know that at the edge of the water, it's 35 feet wide what they have rights to. But what we don't know, because it's not in the document, is whether they have rights to one, 35 feet by one feet deep, 35 feet by 10 feet deep, 35 feet by 20 feet deep. We don't know. And there's, there's no way of determining it because it really came from, from that. I assume that the property owner and the Echo Cove Association can work that out because the intent was that they had rights to access the lake there and it couldn't be one inch. And I'm guessing it's not 100 feet, right? But I think that's for the two parties there to work out. And no amount of research on our behalf uh, is going to give us any more information on that. And that, that's a private property issue. Yeah. It is. Right. Well, not yet. Not our. So we have a motion and a second on this ordinance. Yes. Yes. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Uh, yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. <clears throat> yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2520, auction of property 32 Alexandria Drive, block 70107, lot 35. An ordinance of the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 32 Alexandria Avenue, Block 70107, Lot 35. I'd like I'll to move that. For a second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffer Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. 
Ordinance 26 2020, auction of property 16 Tufts Trail, block 40306, lot 2. An ordinance of the Borough of Apacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorized the sale of certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 16 Tufts Trail, block 40306, lot 2. Like to move that. I'll second. Okay. All the roll, please. Turn off for camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 27, 2020, Auction of Property, 64 Roosevelt Trail, Block 40412, Lot 1. An ordinance of the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of a certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 64 Roosevelt Trail, Block 40412, Lot 1. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 28 2020, short term rental amendment. Ordinance readopting amendment to Chapter 242. Zoning Section 5, Terms Defined, and Article 4, General Regulations, Adopting Short-Term Rentals of the Code of the Borough of Apacon. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Final hearing, ordinance 23, 2020, removal of water and sewer late fees. An ordinance of the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, modifying the revised general ordinances of the Borough of Pacon to remove water and sewer late fees. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, open it to the public for comment, Ron. Mr. Mayor, I, I don't see any. I move to bring it back. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopper Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolutions. Resolution 2020-116, authorized authorization of a contract award for the removal of an oil tank at firehouse number three. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-117, Authorization of a contract award for a two to five year playground at Modic Park. Two to five year old playground at Modic Park. Thank you. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. To Hopper Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-118, authorization of a contract award for the purchase of a Ventrac Kabuta D902. So moved. so moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-119, authorization of a contract award for the purchase of two police vehicles and the reinstallation of computers, cameras, and radios. So moved. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffer Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. 
Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Schindler? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Resolution 2020-120, authorization of a contract award for the installation of fencing at Narita Kong Field. Does this, does this include the wall? Uh, Mayor, this is to replace the entire fencing. That's, if you drive up to Nariticon and the first field on the right, it's got the big back stops yeah, yeah, and the yeah. wall is falling down. All that fencing is being replaced. Okay. So I, I, I have a question about it. Yes. In the drawings, you have the fencing going around to that dugout that's closest to the road. Yes. Why does it in, include the fencing include that eight feet and the dugout? I don't know. I thought it included the whole thing. We'll look no, at that. In, I'm, I'm just going on the drawing um, yeah. because I think that, you know, if we're going to do it, uh, we should, you know, we absolutely. should do it. Oh, absolutely. Do well. It's intended to do the entire fencing. Um, so we will, we will take care of that. Just make sure we don't miss that. No, we won't. We won't. All right. Okay. I, the, the question I have about it is I, I see the quote for the fencing. I don't see a quote for the wall. Yes, thank you. We don't. But that's coming next. That's the fencing people or the fencing people. We're pulling that off the state contract. I'm getting quotes as we speak for the wall. Okay, so, so there are going to be two separate resolutions. Two, one yes. for fencing and one for the wall. Absolutely. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. No, we don't have a motion. Oh, yeah, I, I thought we did. Okay, do one. Well, I'm, I'll make a motion for the fencing. We're just talking about the fencing, right? Just the fencing. Okay. That's all this is. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second? second. I'll second it with the eight feet. Yeah. Okay. All the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Good Lord, yes, and amen. <laughs> Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-121, authorization of an award of a professional service contract for licensed water operator and consulting services. So move it. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-123, certification of the annual audit. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-124, Tax overpayment refund for block 31007, lot six. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2020-126. Authorization to hire Anna Reardon for Senior Center and Recreation as Clerk One. I move it. Second. Second. I have uh, questions about this. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to know where the benefit is to the taxpayer for one full time person rather than two part time people that we have there now. I thought Anna was part time, would be part time. Anna's moving from part-time to full-time. So I want to know what the benefit would be of moving her to full-time rather than the two part-time positions that we have. What would be the benefit for the taxpayer? Well, the benefit of the taxpayer, as I understand it, would be a continuity of service because Anna is certified and qualified to work in the kitchen. She also can work recreation and the part-time person in recreation, as I understand it, is leaving. Mm -hmm. And so some, someone will be started from scratch. So the recommendation is to hire one full-time instead of having one full-time instead of two part-time. And so in the monthly discussion on this, but 
uh, it's advantageous because she can do both jobs and has done both jobs. That, that's, okay. uh, that's my understanding. So how many hours a week does she work now? 20 was my understanding. 20? And how many would full-time be? 32 and a half. 32 and a half. Uh, uh, who, who, who are we speaking about, Anna or Dawn? Anna works 25 hours a week. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the difference is the difference between 25 and 32 and a half. So if we move. Seven and a half. I'm sorry? Right. So seven and a half hours. Seven and a half hours. Um, so in making her full time, we also have to take into account that there are benefits with a full time employee. Which she's not. She, she's. she's uh, testified that she will not receive benefits. Right, but if she has a qualifying event, like her husband loses his job, then she qualifies for benefits. We can't deny her benefits. No. Just because she's testified she's not going to take them. Right. Um, we also pay, you know, full-time comes with a lot of days off. Is that accurate? So how many hours is this really a, a difference between full-time and part-time? And then my last question is, and I don't know who can answer this. My last question is, is this really a good financial decision for the borough and for the taxpayer? That, that's, I can answer that by saying it would help, it would help the operation run more efficiently. Uh, if you're counting the pennies, I'm not sure about the dollars, but sometimes if you do, if you just run, in my experience, if you just run figures on a piece of paper Sometimes you just throw the baby out with the bathwater and you're not helping your operation. And I, I would usually agree with you, but I think that what I looked at was that the difference between hiring a second part-time employee is actually 50 hours instead of 32 and a half. And if benefits are, if benefits are taken at any point during a qualifying event, the difference is $17,000 in salary. And I think that my opinion is that in the middle of a pandemic, I don't think that we should be, and maybe I should defer to our, to, to our, to somebody who knows better than I do, that I'm just, but that's how I read that, that form. I mean, we're, we're unsure about third quarter, fourth quarter taxes. We're unsure what our, our borough is going to look like in the next year or two after we recover from this. And I think that hiring two part-time positions, we're getting 50 hours instead of 32 and a half and we're not paying benefits well if we if we followed that model we could do it throughout the borough and that wouldn't help what we did very well but, and i oh. and i but i'm not saying every every well, but position. i am well, i am you're saying well they, they could in a, in a change of event they could have uh claim benefits well in a change of events we could make a part we can make a policy in the borough we that we only have part-time people Right, but we're not making well, that policy. That we're talking about this for. position. Well, so I want to know if this is a good financial decision for the taxpayers of the borough. Mayor, if I could ask a question of Ron. Ron, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I just want to step in for clarification. I think we're going down uh, what uh, different benefits may be, but can you explain what the benefits are to the retired people? I mean, to the part-time people, I think they get very prorated benefits. Can you speak on that with authority? Yeah, the only benefits we're talking that has any fiscal issues with it is when they go full-time and they can, uh, they can acquire health care. And, um, and also there's their pension side of it. There's our pension increase, which is minor in this particular position, and we're always in the rears. We won't see that for another two years. But the absenteeism, all part-time uh, people accrue their, their benefit time, just like full-time people do. It's vacation, holiday, and sick, but they only get their 20 hours. So they'll get 20 hours worth of accruement of their sick time. So she can be out as much as she has earned in that 20 hour, or 20, excuse me, 25 hour calculation. So she's accruing at a 25 hour per week calculation in health, holiday, and vacation. This allows her to accrue at 32 hours a week. So she'll get full, accruement of benefit time at a 32 hour rate versus a 25 hour rate. I think what's missing here too is that Dawn, the, the person that's leaving, is still going to be on what we call a part-time on-call basis and meaning that she won't be there every day but she's still on our registry to call if we need her. 
if there's part-time help that's needed, if Ann for some reason calls out, we have the ability to call Dawn to come in if it's needed. And she's still on a part-time on-call basis. So she won't be accruing any benefit time with that, but she is in our registry. It's kind of like a temporary work workforce, if you will. Okay, so Ron, thanks. I hope that answered your question. It does, yeah. I just, I just think there was a mis misunderstanding that part-time people accrue nothing, but they do. Oh, they no, do. I don't think they accrue nothing. I, they accrue at, a, at, a, at the, the rate at which they're working. So if it's 0.27%, it's 0.27% of 25 hours rather than 32 and a half hours. Yeah. I just think my, my point is, is that I, I think spending this money at this point is not a smart idea. But we still have an operation to run. And Dawn's so leaving Dawn, Dawn, second part-time position. I'm sorry, Dawn. Go ahead. It's okay. Dawn's leaving. Yes. Is that my understanding? So we're replacing, we're replacing Dawn with Anna, correct? Yes. Okay. You're making, no. But you're making no. 50 hours, 32 and a half. My understanding is that Dawn, um, Anna is take, basically taking over both. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for her 32 and a half, Kathy and uh, Anna are going to handle everything and they're not going to need another part timer. Oh, okay. Okay. They will not and, need another my, part timer. No. That, that's my understanding. And yep. with the vacation and stick time and stuff, we're only talking a differential of uh, 11 and a half days for vacation and sick to a full timer that's getting 15. So, not, and I'm not downplaying that. There is a difference there, but it isn't like it's from zero to 50. <clears throat> and and, our, and that, our, wasn't, that wasn't in the uh, calculations. Thank you, Rich. Yep. So, right. So we're going from 50 hours a week from these two positions to 32 and a half and increasing our cost by a potential of $17,000 a year. Well, we're not increasing our cost to anything, but it could. But it in reality, we're not increasing anything, but, you know, we can, bad thing can happen, un unexpected thing can happen all the time. And if we, if we, you can't hold that thought because we only, we can deal with what we know today. So we can make decisions on that. And uh, it just. So Jennifer, if you, if you look at the chart or whatever that you're coming from and you take off of the health benefits, all of a sudden we're saving money. Okay. Now, just like anyone else in the, uh, in the borough, there are employees that don't, um, don't claim health benefits because they have a spouse who has health benefits. Any of those individuals could have a major event where their spouse loses their job, loses their benefits. And guess what? The, our employee will be coming to Ron and saying, please put me on benefits. And we'll have to do that. So that's, uh, you know, and the other thing with uh, Anna is, is, you know, do we want to keep her? You know, how bad do we want to keep her too, if she's a good employee? That's the other thing. That's another reason for moving someone to full time. Oh, no, I, I, I get the yeah. reason. My concern is we're going from 50 hours a week to 32 and a half. So yes, in fact, you better be cheaper than than what we have or what but it, it's still 50 hours a week is a lot 32 and a half is not so why not two part-time positions I, I have a question here can a part-time employee be hired for with less than 25 hours uh, a councilman, a part-time employer can be hired at any hourly rate. You can do 8, 10, 12, 15, doesn't matter. It's whatever we set as a schedule. Okay. And the reason I ask that question is very simple. I look at this from totally, from probably 180 degrees the other side from a business <laughs> standpoint. We have two employees that were working 25 hours a piece. One of them is leaving. Yeah. The other who is already working there, we're going to pick that up and make her from part-time 25 hours a piece to full-time 32.5. So I have to ask the question now, if she's only working an additional seven and a half hours to cover the 25 of the other employee that's leaving, my question is, did we need that other employee in the first place? 
John, if I can answer that, just I think everybody don't know some of the numbers behind the scene here. I do know a lot of the numbers, Brad, and I know both. I know I know the rec department. I know the, the food service. I know Dawn. I know Anna. But I'm Dawn is only sick. Dawn is only working twenty hours. Everybody's throwing up twenty five and twenty five. There's only twenty hours being worked. Okay. By Dawn. So forty five so, and thirty two and a half. Go ahead. So just just for the record, we're we're dealing twenty and twenty five is what it really is. Question still applies. Sure. Yep. All right. It's at the pleasure of the council. So so I'm going to put my two cents in. John, I agree with you. Jennifer, I hear you. I agree with you too. I'm a businessman. Sometimes numbers don't work out. And the bottom line is when I talk to the uh, director, Kathy, uh, I tried to sell her on doing two part-times and she was pretty adamant that she would like to have a full-time. And I said, listen, that's fine, but don't expect a part-time coming later on. And she was fine with it. She thinks she can get the work done. So that, that being said, I mean, you know, sometimes you have to go with your, 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 your director, your head boss of the department, department head, or sometimes you don't. And that's, I think, what this comes down to. My concern with that is yep. if she's incorrect, and she's probably not, but we if we tell her, if we make her full time, we're not gonna allow you to ask for another part-time help. The question then becomes, does the service output of the department suffer? Well, then Kathy has some explaining to do, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, her, her, performance, her, her performance is judged on that. Yeah. So where are we going, folks? Well, I'll make a motion for it. It's, we already have a motion and a second on the floor. All right. Call okay. the roll. Okay, Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. No. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. No. Motion carried. Yes, All right. Yes. All business. No business. <clears throat> um, I, I do have something I, I want to bring up. Um, I'm curious, have we considered or looked into getting back to in-person meetings? And the reason I say that is we have a few um, entities in the borough that have are not comfortable with Zoom. They've been meeting most recently um, in person, but under the pavilion, which is deemed outside. Um, but obviously with fall and winter coming, we can't do that forever. So I think the question needs to be asked, could we you know, move to in-person meetings again? What would we have to do? So on and so forth. I, 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 I believe, let me follow up with that, John. I, we're having some conversations now about that with the uh, with the the, uh, the state department of health. Uh, if we do, we need to proceed with great caution. Of course, I think the whole the whole thing here is the distancing and masks. I've asked Ron to order <clears throat> UVC lights. Hopefully, we can we can get them in sooner than later. UVC lights are effective with the coronavirus. And I would like, I would like order one for the courtroom, the senior center, the community center, other significant places where people might gather even in limited numbers. I think if we take the right precautions, we can do this. Let me get some, some more guidance uh, or so, a, a better comfort level with our folks in Trenton and I, it's sometimes not easy to do, but I, I can I can really get some guidance with them. Pretty much what they're going to tell me is, yeah, do whatever you want, but but that's the wrong answer. I need some some clinical guidance from them on steps that we should take, policies that we should have uh, to move forward with this. So in answer to your question, John, I believe we should 
start that sooner than later, but give me a chance to do a little bit okay. more, a little, little bit more work with that. And, and we're going to take our foot off to get uh, off the brake very, very slowly. Uh, and I'll get into that when I speak. But the answer to that is, is, is yes, I believe we can move towards that. Okay. Can I, uh, um, I just want to make a comment for those that are not aware the UV lights, what they're, you can't have them on while people are present. Oh no. Um, but it does shorten the, uh, like if you had a bunch of people in a room after they leave, you have to sanitize the room. The UV light pretty much takes care of that for you. Yeah. Heavy surface. They're, they've been widely used for years in, in the medical industry. Yeah. Um, I have two things. Um, are you going to, Mike, make a comment about the parks? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. And the other thing is, are we um, going to talk about the letter with the marketplace? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. That's it. All right. So that being said, that, that, that's a good lead in for me on, on the new business. Uh, I do have a letter requesting that we extend the marketplace until November 28th. I think uh, it's been uh, an outrageous success. And I believe that our people are enjoying it. The vendors, to my knowledge, uh, mostly have good days. Actually, we keep, we keep maturing into this. I believe this weekend we're going to have a guy with pickles and, and uh, enchiladas and stuff like that. The, uh, the, uh, the sandwich truck is a, a big success. I have to tell you, he finally, he came the first time and he got his wife really aggravated because he called her up and said he's so busy he needs her help and she didn't want to work, but she came anyhow. So. <laughs> but, the, but the point is that he did very, very well. And so uh, I have no problem extending it till November 28th. Uh, but as we get into November, the weather gets a little funny sometimes, so. I don't. I don't think there should be a problem with extending it. So Do we Mike, need a motion, motion to that effect? Yeah, I'll take a motion on that. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I'll second. second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffercamp. Mr. You're Hoffercamp. Muted, Brad. Brad, you heard about that? Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Absolutely, yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. Yeah, I, I might add to that that uh, we, we, we have a policy that I've, that, uh, I've talked, worked with the committee on. And the committee is, is, is very good. They've taken a lot of, they're doing a great job with this. They really are. Uh, it takes a lot of pressure off our borough uh, resources. I'm there every Saturday because I like to be there. And it, it's a great group of people. Uh, but you know, uh, we do have a policy with nonprofits. We do not charge them. Uh, I love to. I love our Cub Scouts being there. They they walk around and sell popcorn. And I think, aside from selling popcorn, I want people to see Scouts in uniform at more events. I think it's important that our people see that they participate in our public activities, and they're just a great bunch of kids, anyhow. So that's my addition to that. And we'll have other nonprofits there also. We will not charge them. Uh, all right. And we thank, we thank you for that. Uh, thank you. I, I thank them for that. They're great. Uh, let me talk a little bit about, well, I'm into what I'm doing now. Uh, but Ron, are you prepared to show, are you prepared to show that flyover? I can't hear you. You're muted, Ron. I know, not really. Uh, let me get to that. No, uh, that's okay. Let's listen. But we did a flyover at Crescent Cove. And it looks, although the tests are still questionable, it looks remarkable cleaner. And on the flyover, you'll see what looks like streaks in the water. That streak is really uh, algae blooms. Uh, some of them are green and some are blue green, but you'll see streaks in the water. It almost looks like an oil slick as you look down and it runs linear, that's really an algae bloom trying to bloom. But the aeration system is fighting in a, in a dog fight with the, uh, with the algae blooms. And I have uh, asked the state to do a biological treatment which uses no harmful material, no chemicals. It's all uh, biodegradable, 
uh, safe, non-regulated uh, formulations. I have a meeting on September 14th with Renton with, with three noted biologists uh, and some lake management people that are not from New Jersey. Because what I've learned is what we've been doing with our lake, we've been doing the same thing for 30 years and it has not worked. When you see the difference between Crescent Cove today and Crescent Cove in July, it's remarkable. The, the weeds have simply gone away. Uh, the oxygen, the aeration is now starting to do the correct circulation like we expected. But yeah. don't forget this, this aeration was a, was a two to three year process. And I wanna accelerate that a little bit by adding biological treatments. And so uh, we're arm wrestling with the bureaucrats in Trenton now, and hopefully we can come to a resolution with this. And we're also going to come back with the proposition to reintroduce triploid grass corp at a, on a limited number to help make sure the weeds stay controlled. So I'll keep you posted on that. If you go on Facebook, you will find the flyover of the Crescent Cove. Uh, I think we put it on the Burva Pacon Facebook page. Uh, if, it, if, you, if it's not there, I'll make sure it gets on there. But it, it's pretty remarkable when you see it, you'll, you'll, be, you'll see a huge difference, huge difference. And it's kind of nice. But uh, this methodology that we use in Crescent Cove, to my knowledge, have never not been used anywhere in this part of New Jersey. Uh, and hopefully we can show of the lake, uh, the importance of, of getting aeration in the water, because we still have a 500 acre dead zone where there is absolutely no oxygen after 20 feet. And we need to address that. But first, let's clean up Crescent Cove. Uh, my goal next year is to make that clean and pure. I want you to see your feet in three, three feet of water. Uh, and so that's a lofty goal, but I think we can, I think we can do it. And I'm dedicated to make sure that we we clean our lake up. And I don't see a lot of other people jumping up and down to try to do that, but I am absolutely dedicated to making sure our lake and our quality of life and our property value in the Burba Pack on is maintained, especially if you're near the lake and especially if you want to use the lake. So uh, that's enough preaching about that. Uh, playgrounds. Uh, we're having signs made for uh, all of our park, particularly Modic Park with the basketball courts and the, the, uh, the play equipment for the little kids. Uh, basically, they say, if I remember right, don't come here if you're sick, wash your hands, wear your mask, do social distancing, and if you're younger than two, you don't have to wear a mask. It says more than that, but it'll be a very uh, comprehensive sign, and when we post them, after the sign, they're, they're being made now, when we post them, we're going to open the parks. And so that's taking our foot off the brake a little at a time. And I, you know, I'm dependent on people's integrity and common sense. And I know that's a high expectation sometimes, but you know, we, we have to start somewhere and start coming back into our real world with a, with a, with a great deal of care. Uh, so Crescent Cove, uh, we're, we're investigating a dog park at Jefferson Field. I think John, uh, John Young and, and Brad have been working on that along with the Environmental Commission. I believe it has a lot of potential. I believe it will be less expensive than other places because a lot of the infrastructure is already there. And I think we can, and I think we can do that as time goes on. I'm looking forward to uh, making sure that that happens. Uh, I'm at a meeting tomorrow. We're going to look at a ribbon cutting on the solar field. It's, almost done uh and that's a that's a big deal this has been a long time coming and, and i just i just love taking care of our lake and uh, alternative energy but uh we're, uh i'll keep you posted on that we're looking for the last week of september sometime i hope and so uh, hopefully we can cut the ribbon and pull the switch and, and uh, contribute towards uh, lessening our carbon footprint and helping our environment uh I don't have much more than that. And so that being said, I'll Mike, entertain. Did you I'll want to do September 11th? Huh? September 11th? 
Oh, yes, yes, we're going to have a September 11th uh, uh, ceremony. And I've asked John Young to speak at that. And uh, I'll MC it, but we'll have, we'll have speakers. We'll have, we will have a ceremony on September 11th. And, and we did install blue lights by the structure. If you look, if you look, you'll see blue lights on it. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. How are we leaving? I just have a question about Amanda. I don't want to leave her hanging. How are we leaving this? Or are we going to investigate this pre-existing condition? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to be in the loop on that. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. A second. Thank you all. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.